So welcome to the subcontract reading training free intro webinar. I'm Nicholas David Nan of the Centre for Conscious Ascension. And this training is all about um, empowering spiritual seekers to manifest their soul purpose. And it's a practitioner training, so you, you can learn how to help people align to a manifest their purpose. So, we'll start at the beginning of how this work all happened and um, how I discovered my soul contract here. Get a little pen out here. I'm from New Zealand originally, as you can probably tell from the accent, and I left New Zealand in 1987 to go on the great overseas expedition or adventure thinking I'd be away for a couple of years. And as part of that adventure, I traveled around Asia and I, I picked up a brochure for a workshop called the Carousel of Growth when I was in Japan. And it was really magnetic, this brochure. I was really drawn to it. And I, this course was about a year away, but I knew I had to go to this course. So in January, 1990, I rocked up in Phoenix, Arizona, and I met Frank Alpa who was like my spiritual father, who basically was teaching this very powerful seven day workshop on spiritual awakening. And, um, and I walked into this hotel meeting room and there were 30 other people there and it seemed like I'd come home. They seemed very familiar to me. And as part of that workshop process, I decided to have a, what was called a spiritual numerology of Moses reading with Frank. And what happened there was that he took out a star of David. And he put my name around it. I'll actually do that for you here. I'll log into the soul contract software we have. And I'll log into here. And he Took out a star of David by hand. There were no software in, the, in those days. And he basically um, asked me for my birth certificate name. And he wrote it down. Then he figured out the equivalent Hebrew numbers here, which is what we use in the system. Because in Hebrew numbers, the letters had the same sound or the same energy as the letters in Hebrew. This is the Hebrew letters matching my name in English. And then he proceeded to allocate these numbers around my around the star in a clockwise expanding spiral. And he basically then added these numbers up. The total here is a eleven plus six is seventeen, which becomes the left hand aspect of my chart here. And one plus seven becomes eight here. T plus seven becomes nine. Nine plus nothing becomes another nine, etc. And he explained to me that um, the star day was a means of decoding all the Hebrew numbers of my name. And this was all about um, decoding the real reason why I was here on earth, what my soul was creating for me. And that this large downward pointing triangle represented the physical side of my life and this large upward pointing triangle represented the spiritual side of my life and that within each of these aspects there's three each of these triangles is three aspects there was karma there was talents and there was goals and karma was my unresolved past life issues I had to work through in the physical realm and and working those through, I would then be able to achieve my, I would be able to bring my gifts of service online, which are hidden within the karmic pattern here, the last place that you'd think they'd lie. And I would overcome them by bringing my phys physical talents online here. Physical talents would infuse into the karma. And they were latent initially, but as they infused in, they would transmute the karma if they were a good match. As they got stronger, they would help me get to my physical goals here. The underlying drive I have in life, what gets me out of bed in the morning, 
and this is in the physical realm of life. And the spiritual karmic pattern here was all about um, what is what are the main lessons spiritually do I have to work through to transmute by using my spiritual talents? And once I transmuted them, I, that power becomes available as one of my spiritual gifts to deliver to the world. And as spiritual talents get stronger, that helps me move to my spiritual goals. So the energy moves from physical karma to talents to goals, spiritual karma, spiritual talents to spiritual goals. And if I work through all of these consciously, all these six outer aspects, then it would help me achieve my soul destiny or life purpose, which we we're asking that question when we start to wake up spiritually. So this was all a very powerful revelation for me when Frank um, told me all this. Cause I was just, I just started to wake up on my spiritual journey. I was just reading a few Shirley McLean books and meditating. I was trying to find my way because I knew there was something more important in life than just doing a job and earning money and going through the motions, which most of us do when we're younger. So then he drew these, he took these numbers he'd worked out here and he put these physical numbers on the top half of the table here, spiritual numbers on the bottom half, added them up to get the 63 and the 36. Reduce these by going six plus three is nine, three plus six is nine. That became my soul destiny, the purpose in life. And we're always asking that question, what's my true purpose? And we only become aware of that when we've worked through enough of these outer aspects. And so basically Frank told me I was here to become worthy of teaching deep wisdom from the soul, reaching lots of people in society in a grounded way grounding in my body on earth, overcoming disempowerment as a child to come into my power and to connect to source, to connect to higher consciousness and share that knowledge, higher consciousness, source, share that knowledge in the world. And the four here is more sharing as well, which is what this work is about. And to trust in the flow of life. And my overall soul destiny or life purpose was to come fully into my soul's power and use that energy to catalyze change in the world. So all this was compressed into about an hour and my mind was pretty blown by that, by the end of that, because Frank had um, just explained all the disparate parts of my life, which had made no sense to me at all. And he just put them all, he, he neatly explained them all and put them into context. And then from that point forward, I knew I could get on with my life and up to that point, I've been very confused. And so the first question I asked him was, well, how can I learn how to do this? And he said to me, well, I'm teaching this in about six weeks in the level two of the carousel of growth. So I hadn't, hadn't had any firm plans. I was basically just gonna go to England for the first time. So I thought, oh, I'll stay, I'll change my ticket. I'll stay in America for a bit longer. And, and decided to go on his course, the second, one week long course, which was uh, all about learning how to do this work amongst many other things. So this is how I got into it. And I, and I thought I need to bring this to England. I need to take this out to the world, this work. It was a very, very strong soul drive. And that's what I've actually done in the past 27 years. So it definitely changed my life got me to this point where I can speak to you about this work 27 years on and this work is really targeted at spiritual seekers if you're watching this you're a spiritual seeker and you know, we're the ones who feel quite different from everyone else on earth and we never quite fit in we wonder why our families are the way they are. We don't, they, we don't seem to have much in common with them either. Is that, was that the case for you, Diane? Did you, did you, did you feel, Diane, that you didn't have much in common with your family? No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, 
did you go to sleep initially when you came here? You weren't quite sure what was going on. Then you started to wake up spiritually. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. I went to sleep. I was very much asleep. I was just going through the motions of life. And then I thought there's got to be more to it than this. And as I got into my teens, I thought it's got to be a real purpose for me being here. It's not to get this degree. I studied engineering originally and get a job and do all the normal things. So I went and searched, I went in search of the real purpose. And uh, this is what all spiritual seekers do. The soul wakes them up at a certain time. When did, when did you start to wake up, Diane? That's a very good question. Um, me has happened so organically. Yeah. I would have thought really the, um, the first track, as I call it, happened in 2010. Yeah. Yeah. Was there a particular um, event or moment that woke you up? or it was Yes, just... I got the, the breast cancer diagnosis. Yeah. That's a real strong wake-up call, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and did you feel that you had to do whatever it took to find out why you were here? No, yes, uh, absolutely, because um, as uh, I tell my friend, he's got the whispers, then he talks to us, and then he shouts at us. So basically, yeah. when I got to breast cancer, he was shouting, basically, at me. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I had to sit down and listen. Yeah. And we tend to, spiritual seekers tend to do whatever it takes to um, find out what their purpose is. Yes. And I left my corporate job. I went traveling. I wore saffron robes in Asia. Went to Tibet. Went all over the place trying to find out what was really going on here. And you may have been drawn to watch this video because as a spiritual seeker, may, maybe part of your role is to help wake up other spiritual seekers by learning how to do this work because those who are drawn to this work are very much seeking the absolute truth of how life works and the structure of how it works at the highest level so they can find out how to help others find their truth and structure. Um, that's what I'm into anyway. How about you, Diane? Yeah, absolutely. But as, as you said earlier, um, I think we all get to a point in life then we start wondering about there must be more than this. You have to get a little closer to the microphone because you're coming and going with the sound quality. Now, what I was saying is uh, you get to a point in life when you start wondering about saying, for saying to yourself that there's more, there must be more than, than this. Yeah. And I think that's where we start. Yeah. So, um, training as a soul contract reading practitioner here enables you to become that answer that search for many spiritual seekers because great spirit, God, whatever you want to call the divine intelligence sends many, sends there's three or 400 million spiritual seekers on earth in different stages of awakening. Uh, but only so many are going to wake up because they may not find all the right tools. And this is one of the key tools that the universe, the high consciousness provided to help decode the secrets of the blueprint of life for spiritual seekers, totally hidden within the sounds of your name. And by the law of attraction, this creates the reality in each moment. And this spiritual map, which is what I call a soul contract, empowers spiritual seekers to overcome their karma, all the hard stuff that we all face in different forms, which seems almost insurmountable on a bad day or bad year. Helps them express more of their talents, achieve their goals, and if they get all this right in both the physical and spiritual realms, it helps them manifest their soul and life purpose. And so I, once I got hold of this map myself, it was like, ah, I, I have my spiritual set now, but I have a means of breaking through here, of moving forward in life. So we just explained the Star of David a little bit earlier, okay? And um, would you like me to go through your chart again, Diane? Yes, if you want to. Yeah, just want to see how you're doing. So, so let's close this down. 
Let's go and find you, shall we? This is the okay. web. This is the web-based software we use for the system. Um, let's see. Um, I think um, here you are. Found you. <laughs> yeah, we found you here. Here's a chat. Actually, we'll show you. I'll show the star now. So, Diane, just to remind you, actually, do you have any specific question about your chart, about your life at this moment? Because you've been to a few of these presentations, and I can sort of start from there. Well, uh, <clears throat> well, I'm just looking forward to what's coming next. I know um, in numerology, I'm, a, I'm at the end of the nine, my nine-year cycle. Yeah. So basically, on my birthday, I'm starting a year one, basically. Yeah. Okay, but is there a particular question you have about your life in terms of the subject of experience you've been going through recently that I can help answer? Well, I suppose about shadow work. Okay, what sort of shadows have been coming up? Uh, fears and limitations. Okay. All right, so... Looking at your chart here, you've got the same soul destiny as me, and you've got this nine, you've got this very powerful dragon energy here. And um, the dragon lives in the shadows initially. Oh. And it, it basically um, it lives in the shadows, and it's trying to unfetter itself, break free from the shadows, break free from the cage, it holds it down. And overcome its fear of coming out, breaking out of the cage and coming out into the world. And so there are many shadow patterns of disempowerment in, in this nine, this archetype. And so ultimately the fear, Diane, is to overcome your fear of stepping truly into your power. Does that, that's whole purpose is life. Does that sound familiar? Yes, it does. Yeah. So how's that going overall, would you say? Um, overall, all right, I think, but because I, I understand now, or I've understood that I need to engage with it. Yeah, yeah. So engaging with it and turning into that pattern will enable you to transmute the dragon, the disempowerment, into positive power layer by layer. So then you come into your power and catalyze change in the world. Okay. Yeah. So how, how's that been going in terms of catalyzing change in the world so far? Well, I guess as I, as I change myself, I'm changing the world around me. Yeah. Okay. But I, um, submit, uh, I'm becoming more and more aware, yes, or where are my limitations were well, recently and lately, where are my limitations and my fears, or what's left to look, to look at, what I say. Okay. Because you're very much here to the fives here in physical karma, are very much about... Um, expressing the truth no matter what how's that going speaking the it, truth it is challenging but but i do i do my best basically to do it and i've noted that the more i speak my truth the stronger i am yeah yeah this is about um this is one of the reasons you're drawn to this webinar is because you seek the absolute truth don't you and you yeah. know when and you know when you found it yeah so do you feel we found it here? Because you've been to a few of these. Yes, because um, I've learned as well with your webinars that not one is identical to the next. No, they're all different. One. Yeah, they're all different. Yeah. And your physical talents here, the 17, it's actually like mine as well. 17 is this um, symbolic, abstract mouth, mouth of God, yeah. in spiritual sense expressing itself in a grounded way so this is like in a watery amoeba emotional energy and a grounded way in society so you're here to take pioneering knowledge and express it in a grounded way in society okay 
and yes. then and the physical goal here is to is the same thing this is a lesson to be learned this is the positive energy to help you achieve that so you're here to overcome childhood oppression here and being emotionally suppressed and also not being able to express your truth to speak out no matter what so do you feel you've been doing that yes i have yeah and in spiritual karma your your um lesson here is to take spiritual knowledge bring it down to the earth plane and express it in plain english to people okay so you're here to take the high level cutting edge spiritual concepts you like and yeah. turn it to plain, plain english for people so how, how's that been going Diane? um on a daily basis uh, fine because i've uh I did notice that what I do is yes, I'm trying to use daily activities, examples to explain to people uh, certain concepts, obviously. Yeah. Okay. And the um, spiritual talents are really here. This is the. Um, oh, yeah. I'll talk about the seven a bit more. Seven is this link which unites. It's about taking the wounded heart of the inner child. Yeah. And dropping the facade, the mask you put out to the world and showing your true self, true feelings and thoughts. So how's, how's that been going? Uh, I must admit, I find it quite challenging um, showing my vulnerability. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, are you managing it? I, I, I do my best. Yeah. I'm doing my best. And I find it, yeah, as I say, I find it quite um challenging because I, i'm quite sensitive yes is the five here yeah and the, and the more you show your true your true self have you noticed when your heart opens it opens the heart of others around you yes it does yeah because in some ways by being myself and showing that being vulnerable I, i'm giving them permission to do the same yeah that's a very powerful way of magnetizing the light minded people to you and opportunities in life by being your true self Okay, the 10 one here is what we call potential manifestation. That's the 10. And the one is the divine masculine aspect of God. So it's saying you're here to bring the balanced male female energies of God, the androgynous energies of God, down to earth and to embody that God consciousness and pure service to disseminate healing and knowledge out in the world. So you're here to use your spiritual energies to be of service. How does that feel to you? That is absolutely, that's true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. And the spiritual goals of these seven, it repeats here and it repeats here, is very much you're here to open the heart and draw like-minded people to you, uh -huh. like this, and create networks of people, work with groups, okay, in a, in a grounded way, and to, to work from the heart with people. That's why you're here. Yeah. Okay, and the nine is basically overall, if you work through all of these issues consciously, see with this, this spiritual map of life, a spiritual seeker, if, they, if you can help consciously work through all these issues here, they will achieve their soul destiny. They will manifest fully their mission on earth. And yours is to come fully into your power, trust your channel, listen to yourself first, and come into your power and sovereignty. So you are your own sovereign. You're, you're your own, I don't know, call it queen or whatever. It's not ruling over someone else, but you're in charge of your own life. Which very few people are. We all, we initially tend to give our power to everyone around us, especially them or the authority. How does that sound as a as an overall life goal? No, yes, and it's yeah, it's funny because um, I seem to yes encounter issues with authority. So I think it's a reflection of me uh, of my own authority. Yeah, that I am the author of my life. Yes, you are. We all are actually. This is about empowering spiritual seekers to seek the unique expression of the truth of their soul. So how did all that sound, Diane? Well, I'm looking forward. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to the course, that's for sure. Yeah. So. So what this, this training allows you to do is it... Um, if you're a therapist, counselor, coach, or consultant, or a training workshop facilitator, this will give you the spiritual map of your clients' lives in great depth. So you get an immediate, profound understanding of their issues, as will they. 
and will accurately guide you throughout all your work with them. And because it's so accurate, people's ego tends to tends to um, drop its defences when you feed this high consciousness truth to them of what's going on, because it explains so much. And it builds immediate trust with people when you can when you're a, a custodian for this level of truth with them, and when you know more about them than their mothers will. Yeah. And because they know the truth of what's going on, finally, after all the years of struggle, you get you produce better and faster results in, in applying your other therapies with them. So you can build whatever healing therapies or awakening consciousness therapies you have around the subcontract work and it can integrate with an existing practice that you already established. Just it gives you a very accurate roadmap to work with. And clients who know that you know what's going on tend to come back for um, a lot more work because why would they go to anyone else when you know exactly what's going on? So we're not diagnosing anything anymore. We're trying to work, the system allows you to work out how far they've progressed on their soul contract. So you, they don't, people won't waste 80% of the energy doing things which don't work, which is what most people get. Happens to most people in life, even those on the spiritual path. So you can focus that 80% of effort on the 20% of things that do matter. So, so contract reading training, basically, um, what it does is it, over five days, it gives you a structure that, to help understand yourself, my guess is what it's like, to help understand yourself and everyone else in your life. You'll learn how to give soul contract readings based on people's birth names through interpreting the energies associated with each of the 22 letters of Hebrew, which we use. And we you learn how your channel works and how to develop it. So let's just go to another slide here. So the way we teach this is not about rote learning. Uh, some of you who are looking at this may have read my book, Your Soul Contract Decoded, um, which is sort of a sort of based on the, the training, but obviously I'm not there in person. Um, but the training goes into much greater depth in terms of have actually how to embody the work. The book is a certain level of transmission that you can manage with a book. But basically we spend the first three out of five days where you will learn experientially through complete immersion in the interpretation of the subcontract charts of yourself and your friends and families. So that becomes totally alive for you. So we actually give readings on your friends and family in a way that covers all the 22 numbers so we can see how, what is the subjective experience of someone's life who's exposed to a 12 or three and it goes into you, it actually activates your DNA, it's programmed to your field, so you start to resonate with the, each of the different frequencies. And so what we're actually doing here is giving you a profound bodily transmission of this work, in addition to the conscious sharing to feed your mental body. And this awakening of memory of this knowledge in your DNA is the most effective way of learning, okay, because you don't forget when it's in your body. And what we, what we do is basically the, the last few days are spent teaching you how to structure, hold space for, and deliver readings to each other, each of the other students in the class. And people tend to give pretty good readings even from the first practice because of this primary transmission here that we've learned about. Taking us 23 years to figure out how to teach us. Um, and so you'll leave the workshop, most people leave the workshop being, you know, being reasonably confident, being able to deliver really good readings and making a difference in the world. And we have um, ongoing professional development through a Facebook support group for practitioners. We have web conferencing master classes occasionally. And we have a soul contract mentoring program, which is under redevelopment at the moment to support practitioners in moving forward with the work. So the idea here is to get you out there and wake as many spiritual seekers up as possible. That's my job. So that they can manifest their mission because my mission is to help others manifest their mission. And it's doing it through you if you decide to come on the course. Okay. So what happens when you deliver these readings to your clients? Well, people tend to go to deep feeling space of deep peace when they hear the truth of their life read so profoundly and accurately, usually for the first time I did. My life went from confusion to sort of surrender into this is the way it is, so let's do something about it. I also had this feeling of relief 
there's actually an order and meaning to all disparate experiences in my life. Did you have that, Diane? Yes, I did. Yeah. I did, and it's true, it's quite a relief when you actually realize what's going on. Mm. And um, it helped me move out of the feeling of being a victim of life and taking charge. I've gone from feeling like a total victim for most of my life to taking charge and stepping forward and living my purpose. And has that happened for you, Deanne, since I gave you your reading quite a while ago? Absolutely. No, no, absolutely. And that's why, and thanks to you with the reading you sent me, and that has helped me a lot to pay attention and really be aware where uh how and where and how I disempower myself. Yeah. So I can empower myself again and obviously empower other people. Yeah. And what I can do here is that um, the self contract reading which shows, they should show spiritual seekers where they are on their spiritual map and give them very specific recommendations on how to overcome the challenges they face. So they can manifest more of your dreams. So this can take someone from wherever they are in their life, no matter how bad it seems, and help them move forward and break through things which seemed insurmountable. And it reveals to people their soul or life purpose, and you can help them align to that, okay, and begin to manifest it with this work, rather than doing a bunch of stuff which doesn't seem to work, because people have been programmed by the matrix to believe certain things, most of which is not true. Did it touch your inner being? Deanne? Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Do you trust me now? Yes. Yeah. Have you gone deep in your own life? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so it really connects you to other people, people you work with, and it helps bring compassion for humanity. Help me bring them, get to that, because the programs in our ego are so strong that creates a lot of suffering in life, but this work brings clarity to what's really going on. Yeah. And then people can actually start to live a lot, a little better, and eventually a lot better. So. And create less suffering. A lot less suffering. So, yeah, this is an experiential training. It's not something where you can, you just have to listen and try and memorize it all. It's about becoming it, actually. You become the work by being in the live transmission. And you will be preparing and giving readings in the group. And with a bit of practice, you'll be able to deliver readings soon after the workshop. And it's, it's a very good place to start if you've got an existing practice and we're trying to start a new practice because I started my business, the Center for Conscious Ascension, back in 98 in London, just by giving these readings. And it soon spread by word of mouth. There was no internet in those days of any significance. And um, I didn't even have a website. It was just paper brochures and it soon spread and you know, each person would tell three or four people about it. And before you knew it, I was, it, was a, it was an onslaught of people wanting these readings. This is how this whole thing started and that was about 20 years ago. So if you're drawn to the absolute truth of, what, of how human beings work, how their souls create their life and you like to understand the structure of all that process, this may be for you. So the next training is the um, 12th to 16th of July this year. It's live here in Walton on Thames, sorry, with me, plus a global web conference using Zoom, which is what we're using to record this on. And it runs from 12.45 to 8.30 p.m. UK time, 7.45 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And 6.45 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Central Time, 5.45 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and 4.45 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Pacific Time. So we, we make it as late as I can run to, which is about 8.30, so that you guys in California and the West Coast of America don't have to get up at um, 2 in the morning, which is what it used to be when we used to start at the normal 10 o'clock time. So if you're interested, you can reserve your place for... 229 pounds or 298 US dollars. And you can place a deposit here at um, soulcontractreading.com. That'll, that'll reserve your place. Um, or the full price is 616 pounds or 800 US dollars. And most people who are pretty organized tend to 
have clients organized to give readings to after the workshop, after a bit of practice. And they tend to be able to pay this off reasonably quickly once they get up and running with us. And after that, it's, you know, you have a nice strand of an existing business or you can be starting a new one with, with this um, very high frequency spiritual technology. So thank you, Deanne, for helping me out tonight and for everyone who's watching this video. I hope you find something here to, that's of interest. Do you have any final comments, Deanne? Well, the only thing, as I said earlier, I'm looking forward to, to attend the, the course in July. Yeah. And I think we will be uh, in for uh, an interesting ride. Yeah. Yeah. So just connect with us if this interests you, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Diane. You're welcome, Nicola. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.